It's time to wake up. The show is about to start. With lots of stories about poo and a bit of heart. When it comes to Joe and no, you won't find no faults. But if you mess with the bull, you might get the shots. It's time for morning. It's morning with Bill and Joe. It's time for morning. It's gonna be a heck of a show. It's Bill and Joe. Hello and welcome to Morning with Bill and Joe. I'm Joe. Um, you sure are. Am I supposed to confirm my name as well? Uh, sure. Um, I'm Billie Jean King. Um, oh, a, uh, yeah. Oh, actually, I should show you this. Okay. Yeah, God damn it. If you get up time, one more saw, time. I saw uh, Cat Tim last night. Yes, her, her new book. Thing. Uh, I wanted to, re- as I told you, I wanted to recruit her for the show, but of course she was too popular to talk to me. But they had name tags, so here was mine. Nice. Very good. Yeah, but the, 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 the way the crowd was, like, there are these older women coming up to me just thinking I was just doing some sort of tribute to Billie Jean King. They're just like, she was wonderful. Um, you know, mm. she did a lot for women in the 70s. And I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm her. And they just, we weren't on the same frequency. Uh, I don't think they realized what I was trying to do with the name tag. They just thought I was doing an homage to Billie Jean King. <laughs> uh, sh- someone should, you know, uh, to you. their to their point. Uh, more of that, please, Bill. I did it mostly for you. Actually, I should have shaved. I look more like her if I'm clean shaven. Um, um, but the the event was nice. Very good. She basically was just being interviewed by Nick Gillespie. Uh, I'd forgotten that she's pregnant. Mm-hmm. I just assumed she was too skinny to be pregnant. But that little sucker, she's going to squeeze out a new cat real soon. And uh, yeah, she did a really great job. Um, it's the first time, apparently, that she's not been on, on amphetamines. It's not Adderall, but it's a version of that since she was five. Because obviously being pregnant, which wow. is crazy. And I have to tell you, her voice is a little different. Is it? Yeah. And she doesn't talk the way she used to. And I wonder if it's because she's just not on the meds now because she's pregnant. Yeah, it's when you're on something for so long, it's hard to know what is you and isn't you. We've talked yeah. about me being on birth control for as long as I have been. Are you uh, off of it now? No, I'm still on it. But, you, tell. you know, pro- honestly, <laughs> the day I go off of it, I feel like you will know. <laughs> oh, and you're you'll be hard. like, something's different. Oh, I, I, yeah, unfortunately, yes, I will absolutely, I will be upset with myself if I didn't know. <laughs> Imagine if I end up like being really nice to you and, you know, it's like so off putting. Yeah. Oh, I won't like it. it. Yeah. I don't like change. Um, no, but you, uh, yeah, you, there's no way it's going to make you meaner. I don't think that's possible. Yeah, probably not. Um, but, but we'll see, or will we? Uh, who knows? <laughs> Children are expensive. Not trying to have any right now. Good, good. That's music to my ears as well. Uh, well, we got a lot to discuss. I don't know if you want to uh, resurrect an oldie. Is it a goodie? Uh, called Sag Hag because... I can't share friend... anything. Huh? I can't share anything. Oh. Uh, it's uh, called well, NDAs, Bill. Well, you've been busy. I guess we'll just have to leave it at that. Yeah, I've been from busy. Either with... pro- from either project. Yeah, it, neither has been announced, so I can't say anything. All I will say is that uh, I'm booking acting work, you guys, so that's Seriously, great. it is not only raining, it is pouring. Now, yeah. if I could get a little bit of that water yeah. on my neck of the woods, that would be nice. Uh, it's like- also, you know, it's just, like, really stressful right now, too, because so I left my – I have two shifts left, my old restaurant job. Because I was starting a new one. I just wanted a change and the opportunity to make a little more money. It's like a little more upscale than where I was at. Mm-hmm. And I just had to give my notice to this new place that I just started at. <gasps> oh, that's that right. The restaurant hasn't even opened yet. Like I was part of a new opening team. That. And I already had to give my notice. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to have to take two months off. I'm doing this project. Um, but, you know, projects end. And I'm going to need a job after, so I'd love to be able to come back. <laughs> so, yeah, That's it's just So what was the stressful. reaction? I wonder how that works. 
You know, um, these managers have a ton on their plate right now, again, because the restaurant isn't open yet. So there's still like so many moving parts and things changing and staffing and all of those issues. And uh, they were happy for me, but you could you could tell there was like a slight sheen of sweat that appeared on their yeah. brow hearing this. And oh God, I just have this personality where I feel bad and I shouldn't. I really shouldn't. I don't owe people stuff you know, I'm forthright and honest and yeah. giving people enough time uh, to, you know, hire out or whatever. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I always feel bad. I don't know. So what you're saying is that your only real flaw is that you care too much. Yes. Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do. Bill, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yeah. It's like at job interviews when they're like, okay, but what, yes. what is your flaw or, or what, what aren't you great at? And you're like, I care too much or I'm a perfectionist. I can't leave until the job is done. Yes. I'm a workaholic. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't balance enough me time. I'm just too much. Um, by the way, speaking of, well, I guess we're not speaking of it, but apropos of nothing, uh, I saw a Broadway thing this weekend. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, I have not seen O'Mary. Douglas Don't see it with your mom. <laughs> Douglas saw it when it was off Broadway. Then it moved to Broadway. Yes. Uh, so you can go ahead and share your experience. However, just a brief overview. It's about Lincoln's wife and she's yeah. a raging alcoholic. Put it mildly. Um, I mean, I think that the only, uh, by the way, it's unbelievably historically accurate. Why is my camera so much better in the kitchen? Bill, why you're getting up and doing all of this during, like, do you see how professional I am? This is. Don't get, don't tell me, don't, don't make me tell you what the mic looks like again. Um, but also like, does, does, look at this. Why is it so much better in here? It's called good lighting, Bill. Okay. Should I stay in the kitchen? I, I, I don't know. I, we haven't tried this yet. Um, all right. So anyway, back to O'Mary. Um, yeah, played by Cole, Esco Cole Escala. Yes. Uh, very short, small cast. Um, Mary is uh, super cuckoo, big old drunk. Um, it's the dirtiest thing I've ever seen in my life. Although I, didn't, I never saw Slave Play. But... Um, and it was really, it's very funny, but um, boy, is Abraham Lincoln gay. So gay <laughs> that there may be an affair with uh, John Wilkes Booth. I'm just throwing that out there. Funny. Uh, um, but these are very graphic gay scenes. And I was sitting right next to my mom. And I don't think any of us were prepared for what this play was truly all about. You know, my parents like history. I don't know how historically accurate it was. <laughs> I think yeah. I would have laughed harder if I wasn't so uncomfortable. What made them pick... This versus, I don't know, suffs about the suffragettes. That might be a little more their speed. Uh, seriously, I, I think they just saw the Lincoln thing. Um, they liked that. It was not my decision, but, uh, you know, free ticket. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I would have had a better time were it not that I was right next to the mom. But wait, uh, I got to know. You're leaving the theater. You're heading back. What are your parents saying? You know, the moments where you're like, that was great, or that wasn't what I expected. Like, what was their feedback? They, I mean, they were like, well, it was a little graphic, but uh, they, they thought it was really funny. But there's like seriously a scene where there's a Civil War general that's just like asking Lincoln why he filled his mouth full of sperm. Like, that's a scene. And like, after he leaves it underneath his desk. <laughs> wow. I'm just sitting there going, okay, all right, bathroom time. Like, uh, it was. I wasn't present and mindful of the situation. And yeah, just, right. That's hard. It's hard to, I'm sure you would have, had, have enjoyed it differently if you weren't sitting right next to your parents. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, I've entered the lottery. So like a lot of these Broadway shows have digital lotteries. Oh, I thought so, it was the lotto lotto. <laughs> no, no, well, that too. Uh, and you could win reduced price tickets. And I won the lottery for slave play when it was back in the day. And it always mm. felt weird saying I won the lottery to slave <laughs> play. But yeah, no, I haven't won anything in a while. I don't know how many people enter. Like, I don't know. But uh, I refuse to, play, to pay full price anymore because Broadway has oh, gotten God, really no. expensive. 
speaking of theater, political theater, did you watch the presidential debate the other night? Unfortunately. Am I the yeah. only one that was like, well, I mean, <clears throat> if you were to do comparisons, I suppose, yes, Kamala did indeed win. I was a little nonplussed by her performance. I think she said a lot without saying anything, which I guess is the mark of a good politician. But everyone else seems to be through the moon, liberal media, um, about her performance. I was like, it was... Trump was Trump, but I, I didn't think she necessarily knocked it out of the park, but I guess I'm in the minority. How about yourself? You know, I would equate it to, you know, Simone Biles could go to the Olympics and just do a few cartwheels, maybe a round off back handspring and still do really well because compared to the competition, leagues ahead, right? So Kamala know. next to Trump, she just has to get on the stage and not actually shit her pants or, <laughs> fa or actually fall on her face. And she's she's accomplished leaps and bounds, tens from the judges. Uh, right. I did not get to watch. Uh, I had acting class, you know, priorities. Yes. And yeah, well, she actually did make the right choice. But um, I did watch some clips. Man. God, we know I can't control my face. At all. There was so much, like, face conversation happening on that stage between both Kamala and Trump. Like, neither of them are trying to <laughs> poker face anything. Anything. It's incredible. Was, I thought hers was a little choreographed, though. I thought oh, all the face yes, of course. she was doing, Trump is what you're saying. Um, yeah. And it was a lot of this. A lot of like, yeah. hmm. like um, I can't but, even do it. Uh, <laughs> also, the, oh, that, that was uncanny. I felt like I was there. Um, also, whatever, what is it spray on tan? Whatever the hell that is. But you could, the, I thought that the eye, uh, the part of the parts of the eye where the orange was not on it was very pronounced. And you would think that they would have sort of like figured that out before a debate with 60 million people watching. Yeah. Uh, for a lot of women, it's the under eye concealer. However, in this case, you know, if Trump were to be in a tanning bed, you got to yeah. wear goggles. And so sometimes the goggles create the white. So I'm not entirely sure where he gets his coloring from but there's there could be a few reasons for that i don't want to say we're doing we're dealing in breaking news here right now but actually i will say it we're dealing in breaking news right now are we the first news outlet to uh suggest that this is the first time that a white house has got a tanning bed in it ah uh, i don't think we're the first no but let's just come on like, oh, sure. Edit that part out. Okay. So we're the first. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. It's a level four tanning bed. 20 <laughs> minutes in that thing, and you're ready to take on the world. Is, but okay. I, I, I think you're right. There's nothing else that would explain the AI thing, but I didn't know tanning beds made you look like that. I really well, thought I, it was a spray on thing. I'm, I'm not sure that it is. It might just be makeup. But we are really getting off track, as is our speed. But Or on track? Speaking of tracks, music, Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, I like it when you don't try. Everyone was waiting to see when she would come out and endorse a candidate. If you thought it wasn't going to be Kamala you dumb. She did. She did. After the debate, she posted a picture of herself and her cat. I'll in insert it here. And I don't know if you have the article in front of you, Bill, but she sure. um, basically said why it was that she was going to be voting for Kamala. I'll she give you the highlights. then uh, stressed the importance of voter registration and signed yeah. off childless cat lady, which I believe is in reference to something J.D. Vance said. Indeed it was. And she left, and to your point, she left a link where people can register to vote. I think that was a thing that she did uh, when Biden was running, too. I think she could be wrong on this, but I think she had people, places where you could register to vote at her concerts. Mm. Uh, she said that the VP fights for the rights and causes, I believe, need a warrior to champion them. I think she is a steady-handed, gifted lead leader. Boy, did she have some help writing this. And I believe we can accomplish so much more in the country 
if uh, we are led by calm, not chaos. Um, she said of Tim Waltz, the running mate, Swift said she loves that uh, he's been standing up for LGBTQ plus rights, IVF, and a woman's right to her own body for decades. Joe, what, if any difference, is this going to make? I don't know that it would make a difference. I think real Swifties already know where she aligns politically. Um, it might maybe inspire people who were on the fence about getting out to vote to vote. Visibility is huge. So if maybe people were actively avoiding the news, they maybe wouldn't know about what Kamala and Walt stand for and what they're supporting. Fine. But it's, ah, uh, and I think Taylor really believes in it and good for her. You know, I think if I were at her level of fame, I too would think I need to make sure this is worth something at the end of the day. And if she really feels like she's making a difference by making a, a choice or a declarative sort of statement, then good on her. Um, what's interesting though is the blowback now with her friendship with Brittany Mahomes. Yes. So over the last few weeks, Brittany Mahomes has gotten into, I don't even know if you would call it a pickle, but just interesting. She had liked a, an Instagram post that outlined all of Trump's sort of plans for his presidency. People I noticed that she liked it. So I think she unliked it. And then, but she did like some comments that were in support of Trump. So really painting her out to be a Trump supporter. Then we see at the U.S. Open, Mahomes and her husband, what's his name? What does he play football? And <laughs> Taylor and Travis for the Bears. are watching tennis. And you see Taylor and Brittany hugging. And people are like, how can you be friends with her, Taylor? And um, I do like to think Taylor Swift is above it at that point. When you have that much money, you're like, I can only do so much. Well, so. Yeah. But they weren't sitting together. That was the big thing, right? They weren't sitting together uh, during the um, first Chiefs game. She was in one box and oh. uh, Brittany was in the other. And I know that that was a, I can't believe I know this, but I know that that was a thing online. Thank you, TMZ. Yeah, seriously. Um, and uh, they, they said exactly that, that uh, it, the reason that T Taylor was not sitting with her was because of the whole Trump thing. And of course, Trump references Brittany Mahomes all the goddamn time now just because she liked to complain. <laughs> yeah. But now, Bill, you have a lot of friends who are on opposite ends of the political spectrum and ideologies. Mm. And you manage to stay friends with all of these people. What advice might you have for Taylor in how to kind of keep that friendship going? That was a very thoughtful question, Joe. Uh, you know what? I like to call it a little thing. It's a little thing I call the uh, a listening tour. It's a lot of this. Mm -hmm. Rather than just voicing my opinion, which I always have to remind myself no one cares about, uh, I, just, I just sit and I listen. I might do a like, hmm sometimes. And if I had reading glasses, maybe I'd do a Whoopi Goldberg and look over them sometimes while they're mm. talking. John okay. DeVore's patented thing. Um, but I don't talk a lot. Uh, about such things uh, when I'm in front of either a wildly conservative or wildly liberal friend. Um, and unless it's just really egregious, I usually don't even fact check. But uh, that would that would be my one and only advice. I, there's a lot of, especially someone in Taylor's industry, there's a lot of other things to talk about. You know, I mean, she's 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 done a lot. She's seen a lot. I just, uh, I don't see how politics has to uh, encompass a huge amount of their conversations. but. So that, yeah, that right. If you're alone in a room with Taylor Swift, the first thing I would ask her or want to talk about is not politics. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much more I want to know, yeah. specifically Joe Jonas. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Wait, um, I she, so you guys are Eskimo twins. No, no, no. Nick, she's Joe. <laughs> So, I don't know. I, I, I forget what the term is if it's just a brother of your hookup. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah. Eskimo neighbors. <laughs> yeah, you're Eskimo neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Douglas knows whenever we go to family functions and 
inevitably, oh. politics will always yeah. come up. Douglas is a debater. He will. He will fact check you immediately. He he really goes to bat for that kind of stuff. He's very well read and um, he's current on all of these things. I try to avoid it at all costs you. Uh, because, you know, I'm not paid to. I used to be paid to have an opinion on a lot of these things and I'm not anymore. So, oh, well. So, but he knows what I do is, huh? Yes. That's wild. Really? Huh. Interesting. It's just like a lot of placating, like, uh-huh, wow, okay, yeah, wow. You're not going to like this, but once again, you and I are more alike than you would ever, ever want to think about. Oh, I know, I hate it. <laughs> Wait, now give me, um, take me there. I want to see your expression at the dinner table when Douglas is just really going at it with, like, your father-in-law or something like that. Because I, I feel like it's equal parts, like, horror, but also trying to placate. <laughs> uh, interesting way you eat your food, by the way. Uh, it's porridge. <laughs> you look like yeah. Oliver uh, in some orphanage. Uh, no more, sir. <laughs> no more. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we're about to have... Two more months, just under, why I looked at my wrist, uh, of, watch of these sort of analyses, celebrities, friendships, endorsements, all of this. And to which I say, just go to the actual theater. Support the arts. Here's some politics we can all get into. Nice. The 16th president and his crazy wife. Crazy um, wife. I, like yeah, I don't know how historically accurate this play is, but um, yeah, it's still it's something. I'm still I'm still going to play it back in my mind. Um, well, but, speaking of, oh, uh, this will be good. Mary is okay. a name. Oh, <laughs> I love it when you try. And names uh, could reveal your destiny, or can they? I wonder what they would say about Taylor. Yes, this is, sorry, I have too many stories here. Uh, this is a story, there's a term for it. Um, oh, I'll, I, and also I thought this is a good way for us to dust up an oldie but a goodie verbal crutches, even though it technically doesn't follow under that uh, category, I guess. It's whatever we want it to be. Thank you. Um, so yes, verbal crutches. Uh, basically, it's talking about, uh, well, it's, ba it's basically, um, sort of going against the theory that whatever you're named ends up sort of being your destiny. For example, okay, so here we go. Uh, long before Reddit users discovered that, this is amazing, discovered the firefighter Les McBurney. Just let that wash over you. There's a firefighter out there named Les McBurney. That's great. Uh, humans were fascinated by the idea that a person's name in uh, influences his destiny. The ancient Rome, Romans even left us a rhyme for this concept Nomen S. Omen, a.k.a. the name is an omen. Um, I've dug into the evidence, the author, uh, of nominative determinism, nominative determinism, or the theory that a person's interests or spouse and uh, is influenced by their actual name. And I think there are good reasons to be skeptical of it, again, says the reader. Uh, New Scientist, great uh, magazine, actually, uh, coined the phrase nominative determinism um, a while back to describe the theory that authors tend to gravitate toward the area of research that fits their surname. Um, I wonder what it does with new surnames like your own. Uh, mm. A journal of personality, I wish you'd read that one, um, said that people's names influence their decisions, not only about which professions they go into, but also about where to move. Um, they were drawn to towns and streets with names similar to um, or identical to their own, and uh, to whom they marry, often uh, for their spouse's last names. Um, but, so if you were an American of Korean descent with the last name Kim, uh, and you're looking to marry another person of Korean descent, your pool of marriageable partners include a disproportionate number of Kims. That's them discounting that, because that is a fact. I guess Kims marry a lot of Kims. Hmm. Um, they talk about baby name trends. Uh, a 2002 study suggested that Dennis was more likely to be a dentist 
than a similarly common Jerry or Walter. Um, uh, Jerry and Walter were, but then they said that the reason behind that is that Jerry and Walter were older names, less popular. And so then there was just therefore less Jerry and Walters becoming dentists. So it's kind of all over the place, but you kind of get the overall gist. Uh, Joe, no middle name given at birth, formerly no Sachinsky. I assume you have a lot of thoughts. I do. Okay. First, it's a scientific thought. Okay. Uh, years ago, I read about this experiment, and I'm totally going to butcher it. So look it up yourself, people. Basically, scientists took two molecules of water. They named one good and they named one bad, something to that effect. And the bad water mo molecule actually had a different composition than the good one. <laughs> and the good one ended up being better in some way. I'm totally butchering this, but right. it's this idea of impressing not only a name, but like an energy and, and an idea associated with the name on the thing you're naming. So uh, no more Hitler. That's why no one's naming their baby Hitler. <laughs> it's true. I said, technically they would be not, they're not naming their baby Adolf. Sure. That's, sure. Yeah. That, e that either. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my no middle name, I definitely felt deprived by not having one. And I would say as a result, I was deprived of things like love and a straight <laughs> spine and, um, <laughs> and a pet. So, so that tracks really interesting in high school, we had the wood shop teacher who designed all of our sets for the school plays. He was Mr. Carpenter. That applies to the study. A he lot. was a carpenter by trade. And I always thought that was so cool and crazy. <laughs> well, then that goes to the whole dentist being dentist thing. Yeah. Uh, for sure. And also Les McBurney. Still feel like that's made up, but <laughs> um, I always just kind of wondered if perhaps you screwed it up. And indeed your middle name is just Anne. And you just never, you just thought it was just one deal. No, no. My, I think my parents would have told me that. But they don't really talk to you. That is true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I mean, going from Nosichinsky to Goodhart. I mean, if I loved my maiden name so much, I would have kept it. It's not like Douglas asked me to change my name. In fact, if I were him, I would worry that I only married him for his name. <laughs> because Which you did. Goodhart uh, is an incredible <laughs> stage name. Come on. Um, it's almost too on the money. And especially when they meet you, they're going to be very disappointed. Uh, also, you know what's really art. great is being earlier in the alphabet. Oh, yeah. I used to be like middle, late middle with an N. But now to be a G is nice. Schultz, you've always been toward the end. Always in the end, yes. Um, roll call. But if I was running a little late for class, I could still possibly get there Ooh, in time if I finally yep. get the name. Um, but do you think then that encouraged your lateness? I guess that sort of applies to the whole name thing. Um, well, what do you think about Joanne? You know, I am an old soul. People have always said growing up that I acted more mature than my age. I thought people always said that you were an asshole. You can be both. Okay. They're not mutually exclusive. True. And I always felt like Joanne was an older person's name. And so I guess I just really filled that role. My, you did. Uh, I mean, we had Joanne my before we even had it graphic wise. Um, I always would make the joke that uh, my name is Bill, middle brother's name is John, and then Alfred. And then mm. it, because of that, uh, my parents clearly didn't want him. Of course, that's not true. And now the older that I get, and Alfred owns it. He doesn't go by Al or Alf or anything like that. He goes mm. by Alfred. But now the older I get, the more I'm like, that's the interesting name. Like, he yeah. kind of won, you know? Like, Bill, come on. And I mean, I guess Jonathan goes by Jonathan, but still, both are pretty pedestrian names. Um, but I, like, I think Alfred kind of wins. 
It's a is, little like Joanne. Is William your father's name too? I'm named after William Doss. My full name is William Doss Schultz. Oh, but I, I do wonder, right, like with juniors, like with people who are named after their parent. Yes. What that does in this oh, yeah. whole destiny thing. Do you feel like you're then having to live up to this person? Are you always in their shadow? Like, I wonder, I'd like to see the study about that. There are very few um, people that have accomplished as much as Martin Luther King Jr. has. Sure. You don't, you don't, there's not a lot of juniors out. Ken Griffey Jr. That's the only other one I could think of. He was better. He was a better baseball player than his father was by any uh, variable. Hmm. What a, oh. Robert, Downey, Robert Downey Jr. What his about the director? What about the Bushes? Yeah, but they're not June. Like, because he, uh, my dad's actually similar to that. Um, he is George Schultz. My grandfather was a George Schultz, but they have different middle names. So then, oh. therefore, they are not juniors. And that's the same with George Bush, because one is um, a one's W, and then the George Senior had a different middle name. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why they do that either. That uh, to me is weird. But yeah. if you're gonna do it, do it. You know. But totally. I'm trying to think of other famous juniors. I, I give good examples. Robert Denny Jr., that's great. Good for, good for you, Bill. If I ever had a son, I'd certainly name him Bill because he could share in some of this magic. Would you? You would not. You wouldn't want that. No, of course not. I also, I don't think I would want, um, like, I, uh, which is very sweet. My newest nephew is named Michael. I mean, you know, there's a lot of Mikes, but it's nice because he's named after his grandfather. Yeah. Um, but if I were to ever have a kid, I'll let that wash over you. Uh, I don't I wouldn't want a Mike or a Phil or a Joe or a John. I would want it to be, I don't want to make it name him Apple or her, but like, I would want it to be a little outside of the norm. Although you can never do that because like my other nephew is named Henry. And at the time we all thought that was really kind of an old school sort of original name, but it, what, what happens that year, Henry ended up being the most top five popular name for babies. Yeah. Like, you never you, know where the trend's going to go. Or like you think you're doing something original, but you're not. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the names I like are cocktails or alcohols. <laughs> so as much as I like them, it's like, well, I can't name someone that because then I'm probably just cursing them to a life of heavy drinking. Or the opposite because kids rebel. Maybe okay. that's going to keep them sober. They'll, well, they'll Mar join Mar a convent. Martha Goodhart is going to end up being a cute, very sober little girl. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Margarita Goodhart. No, I actually... I really like that. I, I love the name Paloma, but it's, you know, it's a tequila grapefruit-based cocktail. To me, it sounds too much uh, like melanoma, though. Oh, my God. Now I will only hear melanoma. <laughs> It's like a little, so a little, funny. a little weird mole that needs to be checked. That's going to be your kid. Mela is the nickname. That's cute. Mel, Melanie's a good name. Um, now I would be remiss to not let you let baby have his bottle for a little car jujitsu. Oh God! I mean, I feel like you'd get into this. Although I think the the overall. The closed confines, I think, would make you uncomfortable. Uh, I love literal things. Like my neighborhood, there's a lot of theories as to why it's called Turtle Bay. The one that I tend to agree with is that the Native Americans in this area got a lot of turtles by the bay. And that's why it's called Turtle Bay. I love literal. Uh, and the car jitsu, wait for it, Joe, is exactly as advertised. Okay. It is this hot new sport where two members of the jitsu community, uh, while not on their own respective listening tours, sit, seat belted, and uh, take them off, although they can use the seat belt as a weapon, and uh, fight until someone acquiesces at the front seat of a car. And I believe. We have a clip. It's basically a highlight film. Wow. <laughs> You're 
good. Uh, what are like? I'm. I like this so much more than when we would often report on those slapping fights that originated in Russia, because of course they did, where it's the same thing. It's very literal way to slap. Um, mm-hmm. But Karjitsu, all in, on the fence. Is your butt hurt because you're on the fence? You know, yes. Uh, <laughs> gosh, of all the places. Why, like, why the car? Like, who came up with that? Why not an elevator first? Not against it. Or I'm just trying to think of other places you could do it. Also, like, are these fights being sponsored by Honda or, like... (laughs) I don't think they want to sponsor them. I kind of feel bad for the car. I feel like, you know, can you sell that afterwards? I don't know. Do you have to put that in your insurance claims? Mm -hmm. I like the idea that it offers people a lot of fun tips if you're getting carjacked. Like Ooh. what do you do in that situation? 100%. Um, yes. But it's just, it's one of those things, man, if you can think of it, it's like, it's like porn. If you can think of a category, no matter how weird, there's a niche out there for it. And it's the same thing with sports or niche sports. Like, uh, just throw in some words together. Car, 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 jiu-jitsu. All right. Uh, yes. What a great sport. Uh, you know, if you just had a little you time, and I know you like that, and thought for a bit, I'm sure you could come up with a ratings winner of a new sport, Joe. Well, listen, if we're going to do it in a car, can't we do it in a moving car? That's better. Let's be, like, real professional about this. Let's, you know, up the ante. That's got to be their Super Bowl. Throw them in the back seat, get a driver, because I'm not a monster. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't want them to be driving while fighting. Um, but having that driver go over all kinds of bumps, and d- short donuts. stops. Yeah. I like that a lot. Ooh, I'm ooh. Or, or, um, you're, God, this is just my criminal mind going to work. You're trapped in the trunk <laughs> and you have to get out. <laughs> That's just uh, survivalist, I guess. That sounds like, uh, Mulaney talking about JJ Bittenbinder scaring the crap out of everyone <laughs> at school with, uh. All right, kids. Yeah. So you're gonna get kidnapped. All right, that's yeah. just that's gonna happen. But here's what you gotta do when you're in the truck. <laughs> I believe JJ Bittenbinder, which I fact checked John Mulaney because I too had JJ Bittenbinder come to my school and wow. scare the crap out of us. His advice was to pull pull over like so the 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 the. the, the on the side carpet or whatever, when you're obviously you're trapped in the uh, trunk of a car, that's going to happen to you, kids. Shout <laughs> the light and wave to the, a little kid hand waving down the cars behind you. And I always just, and that's something that he did definitely say, good old JJ. Um, but I just picture the car, you, you, you're right behind one car. <laughs> A light goes out. A little tiny hand comes out and says, hey, hey, please. <laughs> I worry that if I were driving, I wouldn't even notice that. You wouldn't. <laughs> and I would feel and so the, bad. They'd just think you were a monster. Like, uh, how many cars have I passed in my lifetime that no, had that children be, in the trunk with their hands sticking out? That would be your excuse. Indeed, you did see the little hand, but you were late for a uh, rehearsal or something. Oh. And so you just had to pretend. Yeah, that's always my excuse in New York City. You know, I see an unattended bag on the subway platform and I go, I'm sure someone else called it in. (laughs) I'm going to pretend I didn't see it, but I'm going to get away from it as quickly as possible. (laughs) You've seen so much and said so little. Uh, You go exactly (laughs) against the tagline. (laughs) See something, say, eh. (laughs) Oh. This has been the most you show in the history of our little YouTube adventures. <laughs> this is who I am. Joanne, no middle name. Good heart question mark? Well, oh, big question mark. Yeah. This is, you've never been more on brand than you have been on this show. Speaking of branding, nice. Bill, your Turtle Bay walking tour. What's the latest? What's coming up? Well, um, I'm... You know what? I need practice, so I'm available for anyone that would like to know a little bit more about my um, neighborhood right now. Um, you know, maybe it's for free. Want to give me a little uh, shekels for the effort? That's on you. Uh, please do. 
But um, yeah, I mean, the, the the tour tour doesn't start until October. I have to go with the guy that's the head of Bowery Boys Tours uh, next Friday and uh, do a practice one with just him. That I'm nervous about, not just for the fact that obviously you don't want to get something wrong, but how do you do a tour for one person? That's a little weird. Sure. Uh, something, Douglas did like a, an interactive tour type thing in the past. And he said a great thing to do is comment on what you're observing like other people like let's say you run out of facts and you're like ah oh, i need something to say but i don't want to open it up for questions just be like huh look at that person over there kind of looks like robert downey jr doesn't he or you know like have it be observational i like that that's good yeah 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 oh i gotta talk to him yeah. um Yes. All right. That's good. Good note. Good note. Uh, Joe, it seems like you're very busy and can talk about none of it. Uh, yeah. what, what, what can you give us? Well, let's do a more you, Joe. All right. So if you, if you tuned in live last week, oh, yes. you. if you then watched the recorded live later, also, bless you, my chat had stopped working. I was able to look back and look through everything. I forget who it was, but someone commented, I think it stopped working when I tried typing in the chat box. So moving forward, I won't do that again. But that said, do you guys like the live stream? What else do you wanna see in a live stream? Let us know in the comments what we can do truly for you. And thank you to everyone for the super chats, for the super thanks um, that you were throwing us. Again, I'm so sorry we weren't able to thank you in real time, but we do it's thank you. On brand. That's on brand. Well, so, yeah. We should do it again because I saw all of the comments after the fact. And yeah. They were great. And I feel bad. Like once we kind of figured this out a little more, then we should do it again. Yeah. Also, Bill will hopefully be getting a mic soon. We're maybe going to be um offering an audio version of this podcast in the future so we want it to sound as good as possible so if you can help bill figure that out someone tell me how to do this message him <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone thank you for tuning in have a great weekend bye